Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is not a tutorial, but just a short talk uh, telling some story or my experience in blended geometry nodes recently. Whether you're interested in or not, uh, let's start. So here we're in Blender, and uh, the story started with a question people asked in the Discord server. So he had uh, such kind of uh, setup with these rods distributed on the ground and he would like to raise these rods and uh, when these rods reaches the destination they need to wiggle with kind of inertia so this is the goal so i'm going to play this animation so that you know what uh, he was looking for okay you can see that uh, it's not only rotating these rods, but uh, you have kind of a bounce off and you bounce back until you finally stay at your desired destination. So this is what he was looking for. Again, this is not a tutorial. If you would like to know how this setup is being done exactly, uh, please comment in the tutorial. Please comment below. But I'm not going to explain too much of this setup. Uh, also, I think this setup is very boring. It's just uh, whatever. Okay. So he was asking for inertia. And if you have followed this channel long enough, you know that uh, several months ago I was working uh, with a uh, inertial deformer, which kind of replicate the concept of jiggle deforming in Cinema 4D. But uh, if you have watched those tutorials, you know the old uh, method in 3.6 was that uh, I have uh, delta time. I have desired position and the inertial position. So basically the entire principle is to mix between these two positions. And uh, I use a sign function driven by the delta time. And there's an oscillator. So regular sign function looks like this and it will loop forever. But if you add some additional functionality, then there is an oscillator yeah, in which you Start with a high amplitude, but then you go back to zero. And in this particular case, factor zero means you are having a desired position. So this was the old workflow. It's kind of very complex because even including the preset, it contains at least three nodes. And there are many other things that you may need to consider, like all these kind of parameters, amplitude, decay, persistence, damping, frequency, whatever. Okay. Uh, it's quite complex, I have to admit. But there are some reasons for this kind of design, which we will discuss later. Despite so many successful animations, whether it's a geoboil effect, spider web animation or abstract soft body animations or potentially many other possibilities uh, i don't really like this setup uh, because it's a little bit complex and that there are too many settings that i need to worry about this frequency phase amplitude decay persistence damping whatever okay it's a quite cool concept but sometimes it doesn't really work in the way i'm looking for and it's complex. So with this opportunity, I'm thinking, is there ways to really improve this workflow? For example, uh, can I use the internal oscillator method? And that's the, basically the story, the, the core part of this story. What's the difference between this internal oscillator and external oscillator? The principle is very simple, that uh, the way to have this inertia work is that you have to run a simulation. You want to know your previous velocity 
so that you know what your inertia is. Okay. Otherwise, your motion stops at this particular frame. Then, how do you know the inertia? You need to know the velocity from your last frame. So, running a simulation is actually critical. And uh, internal and external oscillator are different because for internal oscillator, you have uh, oscillation inside the simulation zone. External oscillator, you have uh, oscillator outside the simulation zone. As I previously mentioned to you, that uh, I'm using a delta time, which is generated from simulation zone to drive a sine function outside this simulation zone. There are pros and cons between them. Uh, sometimes I do not really wish to work with simulation zone because you have to play the animation to see your changes. For example, right now I, I may think that all some settings are very too fast. So I try to change this factor. Okay. But you see the viewport is not changed at all. It's simply because it's running a simulation and you have to see the changes um, when you play the animation because you have to run a cache. It's really problematic when you are working with a project. If you have working, worked with simulation, you probably know that basically when you are working fluids or uh, rigid body, you have to play this animation, change the settings, replay the animation, change the settings, replay the animation, change the settings. It's very awkward. So it's the downside of internal oscillator. But more importantly is there are some issues which I cannot really solve. Okay. So let's give you an example. I have a cube, I have a transform, and I keyframe it. Very simple. And this is the motion we have. Okay. And uh, this is what originally this inertial deformer should look like with internal oscillator. It looks like this. You may not realize there is some significant problem with it. It's working as expected. But what I can say is that it's cycling a little bit too fast. Okay. So you don't have enough time to really enjoy the beauty of this uh, inertia. It's just the wiggle that's in a very fast way. The frequency is too high. So the question is, how can you slow down it? This question is actually very real. Uh, sometimes you may think that let's just decrease this factor. Uh, by the way, the entire concept is that uh, I'm using a current position plus previous velocity times uh, times a uh, factor. So this is basically the formula. Uh, so if I slow down this factor, then the inertia, which means the previous velocity will be smaller. But then it all looks like this. It's, it stops too early. And I just don't have time to enjoy the beauty of it. But if I prolong the duration by increasing this factor, then the frequency is very fast. So it becomes a very huge problem. And I don't know where should I do within this formula. Should I kill this previous velocity, like subtract some value? Or what should I do? And I have no idea. That's why I don't really like internal oscillator. I frequently use external oscillator. 
This was the reason. So after investigating for a night, I finally come up with this frequency damping option. I'm not going to explain how it, how I, how I created that because honestly, I don't even really understand why it works. But the result looks like this. So you can see the frequency of going back and forth is very slow compared to something like this. Okay. And you may also decrease the factor. So that you you can decrease the amplitude of it, more or less. Anyway, so basically this is idea and the improvement. And I tested with this concept uh, in old files like a spiderweb, uh, geoboil effect, or abstract soft body. Uh, this new improvement is 100% compatible with old animations. And uh, the workflow is simplified that I no longer need to add additional one, two, three, four, five nodes, whatever stuff. You just uh, uh, have your animation and you just add the initial deformer. Then you have the result instantaneously. Maybe you tweak some parameters, but there's only this many parameters that you can you need to work with. Okay. And if you want to have a fourth, let's uh, create a bounding box fourth. As you can see. So the top part is one, the bottom part is zero. You can simply add this fourth into the deformer so that you're having this effect. Looks kind of pretty cool. But basically this is the concept. Yeah. And this deformer can also work for rotations. So if I duplicate the setup, And I add the keyframes to rotation. Make it rotating 90 degrees. So we have this animation, like a clock. And then I put this uh, initial deformer onto. Then you can see uh, it has some wiggle of the rotation. But it's actually not really the rotation because it does not really know that it's working with rotation. It only consider the movement of vertices, which also means that sometimes you will actually see there is a kind of elongation of this cube because it reads the vertices movement differently. Uh, this is not perfect. But sometimes it creates kind of illusion. People will not really notice that a tiny elongation that occurs during this process. Okay, so this is a kind of um, very quick result. But anyway, so in order to sometimes working with a particular value, I made uh, this initial offset using the same formula. And uh, that's why they are having the same settings. I have factor, frequency, damping, and the fourth. And the things I really dislike this external oscillator with new improvement of this internal oscillator, it's just not implemented in this case. And also it will be too complicated to implement this external oscillator in this case. Anyway, so going back to our initial question, uh, what would be the problem if I directly use this initial deformer. First, I need to realize the instance. 
and uh, looking at our animation, you can see it's actually quite slow. Oh, it's very slow after realize. Mm -hmm. uh, let's decrease the amount of vertices since it does not really matter. Okay, now it looks fast. And if I put this initial deformer onto it, then you will see. Uh, it looks kind of fine, but uh, since it's working on the whole geometry, as I mentioned previously, you can actually see there is a uh, it does not only put inertia to the rotation, but it also put inertia to the scale. So that the final destination should be on this line of the grid. But you can actually see some of them are higher than that because of uh, this inertia. If I do not have this deformer, then you can see it's always uh, around these lines. It does not really scale up. Okay. So sometimes it really depends on what you want. Yeah, I think it looks cool. But if you want to only work with rotation, sometimes initial offsets will be your friends. So that you only work with rotations without worrying about the scales. Okay, so this is basically the concept. Uh, there is uh, one problem, however, which is related to Blender development. That uh, mm, mm, what should I say? So starting in four point zero, we are having a rotation socket. For example, we have invert rotation. You can see their color are different. One is kind of purplish, one is bluish, like a vector. And they are not uh, compatible. Uh, they will be compatible in 4.1, but uh, this rotation socket is already being changed to this purple one in 4.1. This also means that I'm going to, add, I have to add a new socket, a rotation socket in this case for a rotation inertia. I don't know if it will cause problem or not because I haven't tried yet. I hope it will not cause additional problem. Otherwise, uh, I will be driven crazy. But at least uh, for right now in 4.0, it's working. Uh, in a very nice way. Anyway, uh, I again, this is not a tutorial, so I don't really expect you to learn anything. But uh, telling a story sometimes is very important because uh, I want people to understand the history of uh, how we actually come to here, the problems during our journeys, and uh, so on. Okay, and it's not uh, easy to share these stories in regular tutorials. Uh, one thing I always uh, tell people is that uh, although sometimes when looking at, when watching a tutorial, you think that oh, all these kind of tutorialists are genius, they have uh, big brains and so on. But uh, actually, the journey is never that simple. We have to go through a lot of experiments and uh, try and error and making decisions which is the best for us anyway so i hope you enjoyed this video i'll probably see you next time bye bye